For Kenya Media Quality, I'm Sane Jamini. Political analyst Professor Raymond Sartner joins me to discuss his column titled The Zoomification and the Possibly Terminal Crisis of the African National Congress. Welcome, Professor. Thank you for having me. So, Raymond, is it not an exaggeration to speak of the ANC's crisis as terminal? Is that not also the forecasting that you criticize as not really being political analysis? Well, I say that the crisis is terminal, but I'm not saying they'll die tomorrow. Um, or I don't forecast precisely, but what I'm saying is what is happening is that you have an organization that used to have certain qualities. Those qualities are no more. And in some ways, what we admired in the ANC no longer exists. So a large chunk of what the ANC represented has died. And in that sense, the reason why a lot of people like myself and others supported the ANC is no more. And in some ways, the organization is dying. Now, I do not mean that the ANC will just disappear tomorrow. It may remain the ruling organization for some time, but it is like a dead person walking. It doesn't actually have life in it anymore. It doesn't excite people. Now, B.B. King sings a song, I don't know if he composes, saying, the thrill is gone. The thrill is gone. Now, a lot of us used to get very excited about uh, the ANC and what it did. Now the thrill has gone. The ANC no longer excites us. And in that sense, it's like motionless. You listen to these cliches and all that. So that's what I mean by a terminal crisis. And, and in your column, it came across as if you are downplaying the stealing, corruption, and state capture of the Zuma era. Why do you downplay it? Now, I'm not downplaying it in the sense that I do say that uh, it's crucial because that money could have been used to create a better life for all. But when you say you're breaking with Zumaism, you are not talking just about trillions that have been stolen and corruption and state capture. It meant much more than that. And I refer to the rape trial because the rape trial was a demonstration of something that is still a huge problem in South Africa, violent masculinities, the battering of complainants. People are afraid to go to the police station because they will not be heard properly. They're afraid to go to court because in court they will be suffer what's called secondary victimization, almost a repeat of the rape. So, and then I also say the, the um, Zoom era had a number of cultural implications and chauvinism, uh, sort of 100% Zulu, this sort of thing. It created divisions between Zulu-speaking people and Kosa-speaking people. So I was just wanting to say that you can't say you're breaking with Zoomerism unless you say what it means. And what people have said they're breaking from is very limited. They've chosen, they've decided to pick and choose what they say they did wrong. It's like when you've murdered someone you apologize because you spilt some milk somewhere in the house. You choose what you apologize for and you ignore the big uh, crimes in which you were complicit. You also say that uh, uh, our president, Sil Ramaphosa's leadership has not repudiated the period of Zuma's presidency. What more must uh, Ramaphosa do before he can be taken to have repudiated what you call Zumaism? He must do a sort of inventory of what Zoomerism entailed. Some of the factors I've just alluded to and not see it as simply focus on the Guptas and state capture and those things which are crucial. He must also be take control of the ANC. I mentioned in my article that he 
really he had he could, could had to accept that Eismacher Schule was Secretary General of the ANC, but he didn't have to give him so much space to do what he wanted to do, to bring in all his own allies, to pay former ministers, Zuma ministers, at ministerial salaries, while the staff of the ANC are not paid. Um, he needed to stamp his authority on the ANC. Now, that's not the same as ethics. That's a question of saying, I am in control. You know, people say he's plays in the long game. Game, You must understand, Cyril, he plays the long game. He knows when to act and when not to act. But I think it's much better at not acting than acting. And I think he's got to actually stamp uh, his mark on what's going on. But the problem, in my view, is that he doesn't, hasn't advanced a vision. We don't know what Cyril Ramaphosa stands for, except that he wants to be president. He has set in motion some cleaning up of the NPA and the Hawks, a few of those things. There's not much else that you know about his thinking, because he doesn't, when you listen to him, it's, it's, not, um, it's rather empty. And I think that emptiness must be filled with ideas that we can uh, get excited by. And one is wondering if it's correct now to place so much weight on Zuma's red trial of 15 years ago, Raymond, where he was acquitted. Is it not stretching things to see singing that popular song, Mishinwam, as representing a race? Well, you know, um, a gun is a phallic symbol and bullets are the equivalent of ejaculation. So that symbolically, a lot of people have referred to guns as having that sort of imagery. And the whole trial, the way people danced and all of that was in some ways replicating a rape which he denied had happened. So I think the rape trial was a crucial turning point in so far as the ANC had started to place a lot of weight on gender, I think from late 70s, early 80s, but Communist Party had actually, even in the 20s or 30s, had been placing weight on gender. And they just renounced that by the way they conducted themselves in the Zuma rape trial. And they have never acknowledged that. When you see people saying, if only we knew and all of this, they knew exactly what they did and they've not actually acknowledged it. They just acknowledged the stealing, not the gender violence and things like that, that they apparently condoned. And the way they behaved at that court case was to, they circulate the phone number of and the address of the complainant known as Quasi during the trial. And it was terribly cruel and aggressive uh, way of conducting that trial. And lastly, Raymond, now you appear to hold Ramaphosa responsible for the actions of Ace Mahashule. Is that fair? Well, I hold him responsible in the sense that he is the president of the ANC. And even though Walter Sisulu, when he was Secretary General, said that is the engine room of the ANC, when the engine room is controlled by someone who you know is going to undermine you, you really have to monitor very closely what he's doing. But you get the impression that Cyril of course is constantly taken by surprise by what happened. Now, anyone who knew Esma Hashule and Cyril of course should have known about him in the 1980s would not be surprised by the things that are alleged against him at the moment. And they would have watched very closely and I mentioned in the article that Tabo Mbeki used to go into the ANC office, I think it was every Monday when he was president of the country and president of the ANC. So people knew the president was there and he would have called in the secretary general and said, tell me what you are doing. And I think uh, stamping your authority is not necessarily democratic. It's just making sure they know who is in charge and he hasn't tried to do that. He's too much Mr. Nice Guy. Now, sometimes you can't be Mr. Nice Guy, especially when you're dealing with someone 
who has the characteristics of Ace Machashule, who will not respect <laughs> conciliation. He will take it as weakness. And I think in fact, it was a form of weakness. There was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's policy about his column titled The Zoomification and the Possibly Terminal Crisis of the African National Congress. <laughs> 